Hello, everyone. Hi, Sammy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Sammy and I realized that we both have books that released today. Uh, so we were decided that we would get on live and talk about our favorite thing, which is ways to kill people in books. Um, in books. Only so in books. we're also, yes, <laughs> you got to get that qualifier. <laughs> so we're also doing a giveaway. Um, three people are going to win um, one of our ebooks, an ebook from each of us. And then one person will win a paperback that's signed from each of us. And all you have to do to get entered is leave a comment. So we are going to roll straight into talking about our books. Hi, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sammy, this yes. is oh. your debut novel. It is. Ah, that's Yay. so exciting. So <laughs> would you tell everyone your journey from realizing you wanted to be a writer to your book is here? My journey to wanting to be a writer, that part was really short because I didn't want to be a writer. And so I had, it was a bucket list. So I thought, oh, write a novel, bucket list, check the box. I'm done. Not going to do this anymore. And things just started falling into place. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to finish this. And then all of a sudden, two more ideas popped into my head. And I'm like, no, 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 I, no, 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 time out, no. And then I went to a conference and I was encouraged to um, go in, you know, to submit to a contest and it just all went from there. And then um, a couple of years ago, I turned in this, it's been a couple of years. Wow. It's, I didn't realize it's been that long. Um, I turned this book in to my editor, Shana at Love Inspired, and she sent me a revised resend. So I did that. And the next thing I know, about 11 months later, next thing I know, I'm getting a contract and here it is. So awesome. I went from, no, I'm not going to do this to, all right, I'm going to do this. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So um, tell us about this book in particular. This book, um, Melanie Hutton is a forensic anthropologist. And she became a forensic anthropologist because as a teen, she was kidnapped along with her best friend and um, they can't find her best friend's body or at this point bones. And um, so she leaves, becomes this forensic anthropologist determined to find her best friend. And the hero, Jason, is her best friend's brother. And he is very angry with her because he thinks she just left her to die. And so he's kind of holding a, holding a little bit of anger there, anger issues with her, but they have to work together when she returns to town to follow through on finding her friend. And the bad guy decides, Hey, what if she remembers? Cause she can't remember that one moment in time as in who did it. So bad guy starts coming after her. And of course, Jason has to put his hurt feelings aside and try to protect her. And mm -hmm. the whole story the whole forensic anthropologist came about when I went to MurderCon, you know, that whole thing we were talking about. We like to try to kill people. And yeah. it was awesome. <laughs> Love MurderCon. What was it you said the other day? The perfect description of MurderCon? It was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, <"Ugh." laughs> yes, yes. Because I was on a live stream. It was I did it online this year. And um, I want to go in person because it sounds like just so much fun to do all their activities in person. But yeah, so I, we were in a class and they were um, showing a video of it was a group of teens in a refugee camp and they were basically beating people to death and videoing it and posting it on YouTube. And they showed the video. So I take my wireless headset and go make me and myself a cup of tea and thankfully couldn't necessarily hear what was happening. Um, but yeah, when I came back to my computer, there was a lady who was like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, yeah. I did the, I made the right call. That's so. the way I was after the arson class. That was mm -hmm. the, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. That was yeah. another one where they did a whole um, seminar and it was a case from start to finish. And it was like a, you know, a 
lady died and it was you know who these people tried to murder her and it was you know years later before they had figured out what happened um but this it was just crazy um showing all the pictures and all the case information and all yeah. the evidence and everything so yeah yeah it's, yeah it's really cool if you you know want to see how it's done yeah but, for suspense <laughs> authors yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um but that was that was where melanie hutton was mm. formed was when I went to the forensic anthropologist workshop. So mm -hmm. that's where she came from. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's Melanie and Jason. They were, mm -hmm. she had a crush on him as a teen and everything went South and, um, you know, they, now they're looking for his sister's body. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. I really <laughs> like their, um, because they had that history between them where, you know, the, because his sister had died and she was the one that was there. So she's the only one with this information, but she mm -hmm. can't remember it. Um, and then it was great because you did a lot with, you know, their families and kind of like the fallout and how the fallout of this mm -hmm. thing affected everyone. Um, and, um, I just thought you did a really good job of it. Yeah. Okay. And I, you kept me guessing. I don't don't like to be like this person is the murderer just in case I'm wrong <laughs> so I was like okay he's going on the list but then I was reading and I was like well they're going on the list and then they're going on the list and then they're and at the yeah. end I had this really long list and I was like oh no I have no idea who it is <laughs> so, it was um, great. you know a little secret there I didn't know who did it until I wrote it <laughs> I wondered about that because I know that you're a pantser so yes. why don't you tell everybody about that? Oh, yes. Pansy. See, some of us are just mm, weird, like Lisa here, <laughs> and, and have to have everything plotted out, knowing what's going on exactly. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, those of us who's like, oh, this is a great idea. Let me just start writing and let the characters mm -hmm. tell me where to go. And that's me. Uh, plotting so gives great. me the hives. It's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, yes. Very cool. So um, what can readers expect from you in 2022? 2022 is going to be, for me, very full. Um, I have a contract with the new publishing company, Sunrise. Yay, mm -hmm. Sunrise Publishing. Yeah. And my mentor is Lynette Eason. And um, I'm writing a book from her Elite Guardians um, story world. Mm -hmm. And if you are familiar with it, um, the Elite Guardians, uh, the two secondary characters she had before were Lizzie and Charlie, and those are my two characters. So, um, yay, Lizzie and Charlie. I love and writing it, and that comes out in June of 2022. And then my second LIS book uh, comes out August 23rd. And once you read the story, um, everybody keeps asking me if Keith gets a story. Yes, I wanted to know. <laughs> I was like, who's going to be the next oh, book? Yes. <laughs> and I keep asking because they're like, Keith has to have his own story. Yeah. It's Team Keith. Keith, yeah, and Keith gets excellent. his story. That's right. And I love that where you can, because you can do a one and done in terms of story, but if you can create this world and this community of people, I mean, even like you had an older woman who was there throughout supported both of the characters mm -hmm. um and it just brings something it brought something to the end of the book to have her come in and kind of mentor him um in terms of his um you know his the resolution to his story mm -hmm. so yeah very so fun lisa some of the people are saying that it says the live stream says it's not started yet hmm Everything mm. looks like it's going on mine. And then I wonder what page, if the people that are watching, what page they're on. So we're new to this. Yeah. So you'll have to bear with us and Figuring kind of hunt out. around and see if you can find it on, um, they'll have to see if they can find it on my page or in the event. So mm. I don't know. Oh. Yes. Maybe Jen. Yes. Jen's, Jen can be our technical guru. Can you text <laughs> everybody and tell them to go and... Here we go. I have to go to Sammy's page to find it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for oh, being helpful. We're new. Funny. We're new. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I know. So, yes. So, should we switch over and talk about 
Last line of defense. Yes, let's <clears> do <throat> that. Okay, so Lisa, darling, mm. you must tell us how to pronounce this lovely <laughs> series. <laughs> uh, I didn't get it right. <laughs> and I think if you just Google how to pronounce it, it's kind of an Americanized version of the word. And then I think just from being British and then learning um, French at school, I've so I say Chevalier, which is like a kind of anglicized pronunciation of this French word. And it's basically uh, Chevalier was a medieval knight. And it's where we get the word chivalry from. So I was very much thinking of like protection specialists who are, um, you know, like gentlemen. And, yeah. and so kind of birth this culture of these guys. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some very hot heroes <laughs> <laughs> it's funny having all guys on the front because i usually do a mixture or then a lot of christian fiction it's just the ladies on the covers mm -hmm. and i was like oh, okay mm -hmm. let's, let's give yeah. the guys a shot <laughs> all right so i don't call it that series i call mm. it the team xander team series xander. because mm, <laughs> yeah. he, he's yeah. yeah he's where it's at he's all right so tell us about chevalier and um just the whole series Mm -hmm. but but where'd it come from as if yeah, I didn't know but where did right? it come from <laughs> we'll pretend we don't know um so it came out of last chance county um the team was um always living in the town through the whole series of last chance county they um are you know this protection specialists team who um you know they're usually on a mission and I kind of got an idea that I wanted to use them as the next series and then you know last chance county just kept going and going <laughs> kind of kind of created a whole world of its own and so um then toward the end of that series i started pulling in like xander comes in because he's you know the ex-husband in book eight of last chance county ex bar mm -hmm. portrayal um and then book nine he um the guy um judah who's the main character in Last Line of Defense, he um, is the brother of the female main character in Expired Blight, is the one, ninth one. So, yeah. I had to look at that one, didn't you? They all blur. <laughs> After a while, I'm like, what is your name? I don't remember. <laughs> didn't you have a baby? I, don't know. <laughs> I always have to go look it up in my series Bible. What am I doing? So, yeah. So, it just came out of that and... Um, I knew I wanted to write their series. And then I originally, I decided on five books. And then I realized that there were six of them. <laughs> <laughs> so Isaac betrayed them. And then, um, you know, so I didn't really resolve his story. So I may have to do that in the future. Yeah. So Maybe mm. it's coming. Maybe, Maybe. it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we have to love Judah. He is so mm -hmm. fun. He is um, Mr. Silly and just he's mr funny guy so right. tell us about judah's story because it's awesome yeah you know and so i delve a lot into his background if you read expired flight then you kind of know the history of you know when they were kids and what happened to their parents and how they moved to the uk and then um so he went into the military after high school and then this is you know kind of restless kind of need somewhere to land and then landed with this team and very much found a family um to be a part of and so when the past kind of comes back around, you, we, I've got MI6 coming in and, you know, you owe us, you work for us now. It happens pretty early on in the book. And then um, so they kind of co-opt him into working for them. But he's always just trying to get back to this family and make things right and uh, be where he wants to be with the people that he cares about. So I love the way um, he's always kind of brushing it off with humor but I love the way his sister can read him mm. so well. She's like, yeah. mm, you got to stop that. You know, mm -hmm. she's that. I love that combination of those yeah. two. And fun. you know, it's funny what you were saying about outlining versus pantsing. And it's, I feel like things like that just come out 
in the moment when you're mm -hmm. writing. You know, they have this moment in the hospital where she just nails exactly like he's trying to run away and she's like, no, you sit down, you talk to me. Um, and that just, it just comes out in the moment mm -hmm. when you're writing. Sometimes things like that just develop naturally themselves. Um, Go Panthers. Oh. So, <laughs> and I feel, almost feel like I'm a combo. I think mm -hmm. in the beginning of writing, I needed a, that safety net of, okay, tell me what happens next. Okay. What am I supposed to be doing now? And then now that I feel like I have a handle on, you know, story structure and characterization that I feel like I can kind of let it be what it wants to be a yeah. little bit more than I would have otherwise. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do the characters tell you where to go or do you tell the characters where to go? Ooh, yeah. I think. I think they tell me where to go because they have to be enough of a personality that it's a logical decision to whatever the next step is. And so I think to an extent, I've never think about it as like they, um, you know, argue with me about what happens next, but I think it is more of like a, well, obviously you're going to say this. And obviously, you know, if you know them well enough, you know how they tick you know the, how they're going to react. Um, so mm -hmm. Very cool. And so now what's coming in 2022 for you? Because ah. you have jammed it through 2021 <laughs> with all kinds of books. You know, <laughs> yes, I was excited to finish Last Chance County. And then these Chevalier books, I did one a month. And it was a good experiment and good just to see if I can go that fast. But I think I don't love to go that fast. So I'm spreading it back out and doing more like six to eight weeks, um, which feels really slow, but also is not very <laughs> slow at all. Um, no. No. <laughs> no. So I am doing another. It is the Last Chance County spinoff in a sense in that I'm going to do the accountant's office as a series of its own. So it won't really be related to Last Chance County. I'm going to put it in a different location and I'm actually going to do a town kind of like sanctuary. Um, but I'm going to kind of start it out and see where it goes. Um, and so I think I'm going to do a community of people who are all clients of the accountant's office. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a lot of secrets and exciting stuff mm -hmm. happening there. So I did love yeah. that accountant's office. That was pretty mm -hmm. good. <laughs> yeah. And then in the summer, I will have book one of a thriller series that I hope is going to be a long running series. Um, and it's about a former FBI agent who is a um, private investigator now because she had a run in with a um, serial killer and the killer murdered her partner. Um and um so it's um like her life now and then everything that happened with the fbi and um her dad was this big investigator and so she was kind of raised investigating crimes um eating cereal watching cartoons with autopsy files on the coffee table <laughs> I so, love it. I love and it. so everybody that's read it for me has said this should be a whole series um so i'm going to um, run it like a long running series. So book one's coming in the summer and it'll be kind of either side of that. I'm going to have this accountant's office and then mm -hmm. that'll be longer between those books in that series. So yeah. yeah. Cool. So I hadn't heard of that one. Fun mm. stuff. Yeah. Fun stuff. So I'm Love excited it. about it. So it'll Love be on pre-order probably in the next couple of months here. So yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We you know, might get this whole thing done in 20 minutes. I'm telling you. Yes. <laughs> We're just efficient. <laughs> Usually we talk much more than this. <laughs> right, right. Oh, so tell me. Tell me what advice you have for people who would like to write Love Inspired Suspense. Okay. I have three things for anybody who wants to write write for Love. If I could talk, it'd be up. up. <laughs> but it would be um, great. We're professional. You can tell. Right. <laughs> anyway, no, I have three things. One, find a mentor, somebody who writes for Love Inspired. Mm. Um, because there are so many little guidelines that they say, oh, just read the guidelines. It's like, yeah, mm. that's not gonna work. A you, lot there's of it. so much yeah. more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so much more than that. Um, and the other thing is you have to choose your hooks. You've got to have those hooks. Yeah. They love their hooks. 
And that kind of goes into three. The best advice I had that somebody gave me was um, choose a bunch of hooks and then form your story around those hooks. Don't try to think of the story and then pick Mm. the hooks, pick the hooks and then form the story. Mm -hmm. And that has um, the last or this one. And then the next one that's coming out in August, um, I did that and I got um, the second contract right away, actually, on that one. Mm. And I've heard the second one's your hardest it to is. get. Yeah. So, I felt like um, book two of every <laughs> series is hard because you did the first one was kind of exciting. And the second one, it's like, oh, this is actually going to be something now. <laughs> and I have to hard. work for it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. It just like there's something mentally there that. Yeah, book twos are is always hard. Yeah, so great. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's I mean hooks, 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 and find a yes. mentor. That's... So I have to tell the story about cookies. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's how I think about love inspired suspense. I want to make cookies, so I get a recipe. I go to the store, I buy all the ingredients, I come back, I make the cookies, and they're like exactly what I was expecting in these cookies. Okay, this this is how I make cookies. I only have some ingredients and I don't want to go to the store. So I go on the internet and find a recipe that has the ingredients that I have in my pantry and in my fridge. I tried to make cookies one time. I didn't have eggs or butter. So I try to make these vegan cookies (laughs) and no offense to vegan people because they probably, they weren't bad cookies. They were just like not the cookies you were expecting. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like when you try to take these ingredients and put it in a love inspired suspense, Mm -hmm. it's just harder to get that flavor that you're looking for versus saying, reading a a billion, not a billion, maybe like 15, (laughs) 15, or just read the first chapter, first chapter, last chapter, Mm -hmm. just get a feel for how it flows. And, um, and then saying, okay, I need, you know, her, she has a backstory. He has a backstory. Somebody's trying to kill them. Why? What do they want? What are they willing to do? And it's just, you get a more satisfying story out of it when you say, um, you know, I need to go get all these ingredients and mm-hmm. put them all in there. Um, and so that's my cookie yeah, love okay. inspired okay. suspense story. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I, the, um, one of the things that I think differs, love inspired differs from like, just your traditional publishing companies mm. is with love inspire it's they're in danger or aware of the danger every second of the book mm-hmm. they never get to breathe so mm-hmm. as a reader you don't get to breathe you just you know it keeps going yeah. where the traditional longer books you have down mm-hmm. moments and up moments and mm-hmm. these are just hit the ground running and go 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 mm-hmm. yeah so. it's a great way of writing i feel like it really taught me how to pace and how to put together all those elements. And then, you know, all those things that editors say that drive you crazy, they're true. <laughs> they know what they're doing and we need to learn. Because <laughs> authors are sometimes like, no, this is the story. And the editor's like, I had heard she told me once, I like the end. <laughs> so I went and rewrote 30,000 words of this 55,000 word book and it was a completely different book but it was so much better so you know sometimes we think we know what we're doing Mm -hmm. (laughs) sometimes sometimes sometimes. (laughs) I think Mm -hmm. on my very first one that I tried Mm. was because I I got rejected on my first one that I sent yeah. in. I sent and... in my four, so I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> just brush that one off. <laughs> it's fine. Um, she was like, um, your villain's not consistent. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what? She's mm-hmm. like, um, if he's a serial killer and he strangles people, he's not going to be a sniper up on the hill. I'm like, yep. oh, yeah, yeah kind of got to mm-hmm. keep him yeah Keep and there's, the lo- there's so many small things but they really know like they know what sells mm-hmm. they know what they want um so it's great when you get to the point where you could you're like ah, i'm hitting all these points mm-hmm. and you know like it's just feels like it's connecting so yeah. yes so anybody that is trying or you know you really want to be a writer or um you know even maybe you know you haven't really thought about it but you're like oh that sounds cool you know just keep going don't give up because um you know the market's a funny 
thing. Um, it's hard mm -hmm. to say what will hit and what won't. And, um, you know, just don't give up. Everybody's got a story in them. I yeah. feel like everybody's got something to say. Um, you know, even if nobody reads it, it's worth it to get it out there in mm -hmm. the world or, you know, even if you're just journaling or yeah, just keep writing. Yep. So yeah. it's like, find your voice, find yeah. your voice, find your brand. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Um, I, it's like, I feel like I am a little edgy for love inspired mm. suspense, mm -hmm. but I, I'm able to tone it down to get yeah. it there. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, and then, you know, I have a love inspired suspense obviously. And then, you know, I have indie books and I can kind of explore these mm -hmm. sides of who do I want to be as an author and um, bring those things out. And so, you know, you get the chance to, have a moment where you get to say what you want to say, <laughs> you know, but just that learning how to write those love and sparse mm -hmm. suspense is a huge, huge learning curve yep. of, you know, how do I say this and, you know, who, what, what kind of story do I want to tell? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So you have a newsletter and you have a free book that people can download when they get your newsletter. That's right. Yes. Um, so if you just go to my website, sammyaabrams.com, mm -hmm. it has everything there. Uh, there's even a free short story on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, that's that's pretty much where you find everything. And mm -hmm. then Amazon for Very yeah. Cold Case Secrets. And mm -hmm. it's the links are on my page too. So. Cool. And then um, we'll try and get them in the comments also. Um, might be later, though. Um, I don't know if Kate found your page. I don't know why it's going to your page and I not. I don't know. It should be live streaming to my page. but I don't uh, know. We're not professionals. Um, so then my, <laughs> <laughs> so I have uh, authorlisaphillips.com. And then I now also have lastchancecounty.com. And both of those have signups to my newsletter. And it you get i think two free books so, Ooh, yeah stepping it up there mm. <laughs> right i don't know why i ended up with two um i think i just never took the old one off and then um most of my so these chevalier is all um just kindle and then paperback uh, the paperback for Last Line of Defense should be up in a couple of days. Um, and then my series for next year, the Accountant's Office one will be um, Kindle at first. And then um, the thriller that I'm putting out in the summer is going to be everywhere. And um, we are going to transition Last Chance County from Kindle Unlimited to be everywhere. Um, so that's coming Yay. next year. So. Yes. All righty. We're going to sign see. off now. Okay. Thanks All for coming, right. everybody. <laughs> Hope Thanks, you guys. have fun watching it later if you didn't get to watch this one. <laughs> uh, we appreciate everybody coming on. And if we'll leave the comments open, even if you comment through today, tomorrow, maybe, and then we'll choose the winners after that, just so everyone gets a chance to enter the giveaway. So Yay. thank you. Bye guys. Bye.